I'm here now with Dr. Manu Prakash from Stanford University and his fold scope. It looks like cardboard, but what we actually have is a microscope here. That is correct, yeah. This is a fully functional instrument that you can do, depending on the type of instrument you make, all the way from a 150x magnification to a 1500x magnification microscopy. But out in the field, anywhere in the world, whenever carrying it in your pocket. So easily transportable, easily mm -hmm. assembled. You can do that as we speak here? Uh, yeah, I could show you how to put it together and you can time me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, as we're talking, perhaps you could put it together All and right. tell me, mm -hmm. what do you think the application is? What do you envision using this for? So I have to go back a little bit in why we did this. It's an unusual context. What we were thinking about was uh, healthcare and thinking about microscopy applications in diagnostics. And what we ended up realizing is we've put in a lot of tools out there, which were research tools out in the fields, in the middle of a jungle, very remote places, and neither do they work after the first couple of weeks, nor are they actually appropriate from a diagnostics perspective. So we started thinking about new tools, and then we ended up realizing you could utilize the flat manufacturing practices of origami to really manufacture really good microscopy tools. And we led to that path to starting to then into a vision which is this idea of what would the world look like if every single kid in the world carried a microscope? What does that mean to the world? What does that mean to people's perception? What does that mean to uh, how we view the unseen? You know, we trample around the world and uh, we have microscopic life forms that you trample upon that none of us on a daily basis actually get a sense for. So that was, uh, the project kind of split into these two modes of thinking really about what is a microscope for every single kid in the world looks like and then uh, what do tools for diagnostics look like that utilize optics. So when it comes to the children, you're enhancing that interest in science clearly. Hopefully, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, we have had kids uh, from around the world that we have tested these instruments in. Right now we have a project we call the 10,000 microscope project, which is a misnomer because we are shipping 50,000 microscopes to kids around the world. 130 countries, kids from 130 countries signed up and they are going to upload one single experiment that they do with the instrument. But then the goal is if the instrument is exactly the same, an experiment done by a kid in Alaska can be copied by one in Nigeria, is repeated by somebody in Mongolia. And this idea of observation-driven science is very critical. At an early age, that's what defines science. And we've missed that opportunity because we start with a textbook. Tell me, you know, learn everything in here and then you're allowed to do science, which is completely the other way around. So one of the goals of this is to really make sure that people are making observations. Just last night we had an event with 300 kids. I was thinking about samples and I went to the fish market and they were scaling fish and we bought some scales and all oh, kids get so excited, you know, just the food that you eat has microscopic and biological implications that we've totally forgotten. So it's about looking at everything. That is such an exciting application, but I also go back to what you were talking about using this in remote areas. Mm -hmm. And in that case, I think this is a matter of life and death, diagnosing potentially deadly diseases mm -hmm. for which patients could get treatment if you knew they had them. Yeah, I mean, um, talk about uh, tropical diseases, um, infectious diseases, when they get contained and pushed into remote areas, we tend to forget about them. So there is a classic term called neglected tropical diseases, primarily neglected attached to those diseases because we've forgotten about them. So one of the things that we try to do is do clinical trials. Uh, we have a few disease in line, schistosomiasis, African sleeping sickness. Um, there is a list of 20 or so diseases in which microscopy plays a huge role. But if you don't have a microscope, you don't have a diagnostic tool. The last thing we did was in a jungle in Burma uh, where a doctor goes out there every year to train medical healthcare workers. And our goal is to get a sense and feedback from the healthcare workers directly to try to figure out what is the tool that they'll be carrying in their toolbox.
Well, this is a light tool, certainly. Can That's you correct. tell us a little bit about how it works? Okay, so I'll do a quick demo for you. So this is a fully functional instrument. Uh, I slotted in a little slide. Uh, I'll show you a slide from here. This is a fun uh, slide because one of the high school students brought, I'm going to mispronounce it, sparkler, something that you use on their face. And so this is sparkler. Now put it inside tape. We're going to mount it in, and this is the context that tells you that it's microscopy is about look at anything. And what we realized while looking at this just yesterday, at a microscopic level, it has all kinds of colors and that's where you get the shades that you come from. So you use a tool like this. We don't use glass just because we work a lot with children. Um, your slide goes in. There are little magnets embedded in in the tool itself that allows it to be coupled to uh, any cell phone. So any instrument that you can take that you put these two magnets on, the microscope couples like that. And so then you can also record data directly. And so if we were going to do a quick demo here, uh, there is a little switch that turns on and that illuminates and immediately I don't know if you can actually see it. I'm gonna show that to you right there. Right there. Wow. Do you see that? Yes. So that is colorful, sparkly. And then what I was told by the person who brought the sample was that these little shades, different types of shades, is what give rise to the variety of shades that you get the mixtures between the two. But then the context comes in is, you know, this is an object that is completely open-ended. You can hack it, you can put whatever you want together, you can put any sample you want. It's not about looking at onion cells over and over again, but it's about anything and everything. And then that rises a question to say, huh, every single thing that I use, now how does this affect my skin? You know, maybe I should have a little sample with this, with the skin itself. So the idea is open-ended curiosity. Fascinating. It brings accessibility to science, but also may end up saving lives at the same time. It's wonderful. Thank we'll you see. so much for Absolutely. showing it off. The yeah. full scope. Dr. Prakash, we appreciate you being here. Absolutely.